I'm Tim Durham with Durham's Bee Farm, and several people have uh, asked us about splitting their hives this time of the year in late summer. Uh, our oldest son, Timothy Durham Jr., he manages our website. So uh, if you call in or communicate with him, he'll probably be the one to talk with you. This time of the year, I would not split my bees. You can do it, but you would have to give them special care. And there's different ways you could do it if you wanted to. You will be surprised how you can overwinter a real small colony on top of a large colony. I've made a video on this before, but you can put a door screening on top of your strong colony and at the rear put a stick under, underneath, I'm sorry, put a stick on top of the screen so your top colony can fly out and defecate on uh, warmer days in the winter time. You could uh, overwinter a small colony, uh, uh, very small, two frames of bees. And as long as they had some food, and I've talked about feeding them, but generally speaking, if, if you don't have a desire to, to really spend time with them and pay attention to them, then I would not split your colony this late in the year. Now this is coming up on the end of August. Uh, a lot of hives are really robust this time of the year. They've built up, they've come through a honey flow, and they're, they're really strong. And when I say a beehive strong, that means it has a lot of bees in it. And, and you think, man, I would love to split that one. And you can. Finding a, a good quality queen this time of the year would be very difficult. That would be another uh, uh, major hurdle to, to, to cross. Uh, uh, your queen is everything. When I first started bees, what, in the 70s? Uh, uh, when I first had my beehive or... Back then, I didn't I didn't give any thought to the queen being a good queen or not being a good queen, and uh, that's why it's good if when you start out next spring, start out with two hives, not one, not three, but two, and it will it will let you compare them. Uh, if one has a real good queen in it, the other one doesn't, then it will kind of give you a baseline. Uh, you know what you're looking at. Uh, just like children in a family. Mercy, y'all y'all have seen families with two, three, four children and all four of them can be different. So the same thing with bees. I, I often say that, that honeybees are, are, you can draw a correlation with bees and people, there, there's so many similarities. Uh, you get the idea that some beehives are, are lazy, and it's, it's because of the bloodline of the queen. And on the other hand, if you get a hold of a super mom of a queen, I, you, you will be surprised. It will just shock you. Keeping up with them will be a job. Now, one reason I ask people to uh, let me know where they live is when you ask for advice, such as splitting a hive, uh, uh, it, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, your uh, hardiness zone, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying hardy, hardiness, H-A-R-D-I-N-E-S-S. -S. We're in about 
hardiness zone uh, 7, which is the same as Memphis, Tennessee. I think there's a 7A and all that stuff. Um, we lived in Durham, North Carolina back in the 70s. That's where I started my bees. And uh, there's, there's three zones there, I think. Well, there's the, the coast, the Piedmont, and the mountains. And the Piedmont and, and the coast are all together different than the mountains. So it, it depends on your, uh, the latitude and your hardiness zone as to what I would, you know, tell you what to do and what not to do. Uh, if y'all have any questions, let me know. Now, uh, this is kind of a, pl uh, a plug, it's kind of shameless, but I do have a, uh, a humorous humor, a humorous channel on YouTube, and it's called Durham, Durham's Humor. And uh, I have many, I have all my funnies on there. I enjoy making them. I, th I think some people enjoy them and get a laugh, and everybody can use a laugh. So if I can help you, uh, go down below in the comment and type your question. So far, the good Lord has let me answer everybody's question. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy helping people, uh, especially with bees. So uh, uh, go to my uh, Durham Humor channel. I'm going to put a video on there this morning about weed eaters. Now, a lot of you are not into lawns and grass and weed eaters, but I am. And I have a St. Augustine lawn here in, in Walls, Mississippi. It's absolutely beautiful. But uh, I have a, 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 a very enlightening video on, on weed eaters. They call them grass trimmers now, but I think most people refer to them as weed eaters, even though that's a brand name. But uh, 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 one weed eater, I paid $365 for it. I, it was terrible. I took it back and, and got a, a, a Toro for $200 less, and it's wonderful, and I love it. So I wanted to pass that information on to people. So uh, go there and, and, and uh, let us hear from you, and uh, may y'all have a good day. Thank you. Very recent, a very young couple, a young couple at church got married, and as it turns out, both of them were very shy and bashful. So they got married, and, and uh, as newlyweds do, uh, they turned out the light that night, and you know, so the next day when the sun come up and there was some ambient light in the room uh, the new bride asked her husband said uh, what is that honey and he said well that's what we played with last night and had so much fun she said she said, is that all that's left of it? <laughs> that ain't too bad. All right. Y'all have a good day. Bye.